We serve a living and awesome God. Be seated for one second. Praise God. We really apologize for those of us online for the technical difficulties. But uh, there is always there is always a way where there seems to be no way. Praise God. Can you turn off this light? I want to really um, thank God for every one of us that are here today. We are still believing God looking in to our series that we are still on. And I believe that we are not tired of receiving this particular message. And I don't, I don't believe that anybody will ever get tired of prosperity. <laughs> prosperity is a necessity. Look, like I said last week, you can't be serving God and be looking like somebody that is coming from Afghanistan. Praise God. You, when you're serving God, you need to look like someone that is alive because your God is a living God. And one of the signs, humanly speaking and physically, to know that God is good in your life is when you see signs of growth, signs of progressional activities, signs of prosperity. And when you see all this, you know that God is good in the life of that individual. Praise God. That does not remove the fact that we do not face sometimes challenges. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 23, it said, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So it simply means that in your daily walk and in your daily activities, you're going to definitely see or pass through some challenges of life that may look like you should just throw in the tower. It may look like you should just give up. But somehow, somehow, God is always there to see you through and to be sure to help you through the struggle. Praise God. So today we're going to continue on understanding um, of prosperity, understanding the covenant of prosperity, understanding the covenant of prosperity. I told us last week, Thursday, that the blood of Jesus never made some poor and some rich. God is not responsible for any man's poverty. Poverty is a choice. People decided to be poor and they remain poor. Everybody has one capacity of brain. There is nobody's brain that is weighing 50 kilograms and the other person's brain is weighing 2 kilograms. The capacity of the brains God has given to you is the same capacity he has given to me. So the only problem there is that people are not putting their brains to work. God is an omnipotent and omniscience God, but he will not do everything for you. You may pray to God to give you food, and he provides the food. You can ask God to come and put the food in your mouth. We have our own responsibility. We have things that we have to work towards. We have activities that we have to put in place. Amen. God may purpose to bless you, but you may be living a wrong kind of life that may destroy you before the blessing comes. So who is to blame? If the way I eat and my food is not healthy enough for me, moreover, there is a prophecy over my head that I'm going to be the next Prime Minister of Canada. And I start eating in a way and manner that I am destroying this body. That individual may die before that prophecy come to pass. That's why you are told and you, you've heard this thing several times that when you go to the grave, there lies dreams that were never achieved, dreams that were never realized, visions of men that went to the grave with them. Why is it that those visions died with them? Was it the plan of God? No. So that's why we 
believe that every man has to make a conscious decision if i tell myself today that i must make it i must put position my heart and position my faith to that thing and focus on it and i tell you if you focus on a thing and you aim it very well and shoot you will never miss your target will never miss praise god so we see something in the book of romans chapter 10 romans chapter 10 verse 12 romans chapter 10 verse 12 romans 10 verse 12 we'll see something what god proposed for man in the book of romans chapter 10 and verse 12 it says for there is no difference between the jew and the greek the blessings of god over one is overall do you know something i sh i show you a mystery you know this whole building was once a bush who plants bush do you know does anybody know who plants the bush? <laughs> the earth is bound to produce. The Bible says, Why the earth remaineth? It says, Seed and harvest time shall not cease. So, if the building management that wanted to build this particular edifice here decided that they are not going to put anything on ground, they are just going to clear the bush and leave the ground leave the soil the way it is give it another two weeks you will see that the white grasses will start popping up you know why everywhere you go the earth is prosperous so you ask a question why is it that i am not prospering on earth is because you have not received that key and start walking towards that key i was discussing with um, a friend of mine bishop kwame just before the evening service started and we were talking and exchanging views on how church growth will come you know why we are hungry and i love those kind of pastors pastors that are hungry they are passionate about souls and we narrowed it down by saying it is not just a church problem it is a members and believers issue because when you preach a nice sermon nobody runs with it am i communicating when you preach a good sermon nobody takes something and post out on their social media believers are not conscious to identify themselves with god then why are you a believer is this a secret court it's not a secret court or why are you a believer if you are ashamed of your pastor you are ashamed of god jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men on that day you know that 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 word means a lot if jesus is saying that if you are ashamed of me before men it simply means he acknowledged that you are born again you are he acknowledged that you are a believer but there is a problem with your salvation he said you are denying your identity who you are he said if you are ashamed of me before men here on earth on that day I will be ashamed of you before my father in heaven what does that tell you it tells you that you could lose your place because you deny christ here on earth somebody say amen, amen. prosperity like i said cut across every area of your life both your physical health and everything your your your, your, your salvation you are growing everything is supposed to prosper So I'm going to be giving us some keys today. 
in a subheading you could write and say why people are not enjoying the covenant of prosperity we are still dealing on understanding prosperity why people are not enjoying why many are not enjoying the covenant of prosperity because it's a covenant it's a covenant when god came to came to solomon the bible said that solomon never prayed so solomon never prayed to god and say father just like many of us are praying today you know the prayers that some of us are praying is even more than the prayers of those that god even answered are praying because we are praying selfish prayers when it was time to dedicate the temple the bible said this guy solomon sacrificed dangerously to god he gave what he gave to god that made god leave his throne and came down to earth solomon finished sacrifice and he didn't even pray he didn't even say anything even he didn't he didn't he did not even ask anything from god he went to bed the Bible says at night God came, tapped him. Solomon, he turned. Mm -hmm. He said, Stand up. What is it that you want that I should do for you? And I will do it. Have you wondered how sometimes you are running after somebody and the person is not giving you attention? But those that are not running after the person, the person is giving them attention. You ask yourself, I say, Is my mouth smelling? Is my armpit smelling? Mm, what is it am i not dressing very well oh no there is something you are not able to see It's beyond your physical appearance there is what that person is seeing in the life of the person he or she is running after that you are not careful enough to position yourself and keep yourself that way and it will come to you I come to announce to you today that people that pursue money, money run away from them. <laughs> but those that live their life, just live their life genuinely and keep moving, money will come after them. And when God woke Solomon up from the sleep, the Bible said, he said to him, what will you that I do for you, Solomon? And if that question is thrown to some of us today, including myself, I mean, <laughs> one billion from our accounts, <laughs> a billion dollars, God, because I know God can do it. I just tell God, I say, for you to have acts, you're committed, you must do it. So, ten billion dollars. But you see, Solomon asked for what we guarantee him wealth and guarantee him every other thing. Solomon told God, he said, there is nothing I ask from you, but that I ask, one, that you grant me wisdom, that I may be able to lead your people. What does that tell you? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a God-centered man. And when God asked him, he did not go after his own desire. He went after the desire of God. And told God, give me wisdom that I will be able to serve you better and help your people and lead them. God said, wow. This is the first of his kind. You know what, Solomon? I will give you wisdom that you have asked for. But in addition to wisdom, I will make you the greatest on earth. I will make you so rich that nobody will be able to match your riches even after you are dead and gone. You think, you think that Bill Gates is rich? Up to today, the wealth of Solomon, nobody has ever, if you translate, if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you translate his wealth to today's currency, nobody has been able to meet it. Why? He covenanted his heart towards God. Then the scripture makes sense. That says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Solomon sought the kingdom first. And his righteousness and he said every other thing shall accompany you we want to believe god for kingdom seekers not man seekers not money seekers some people come to church and they say pastor prophesy to me that i will have money that's not a kingdom centered person 
If you're asking God for money, why do you need the money? You need the money so you want to go and show off that you have money? Why do you need the money? Why do you need prosperity? Why do you want to be rich? Any riches that is not kingdom-centered will be postponed. Until you understand that when God blesses you, he wants you to be a blessing. When he told Abraham, as of then his name was Abraham, he told him, come, Abraham, if you follow me and come, I want to show you a place. For this is what I want to do to you. I want to bless you. And when I bless you, you will do what? You will be a blessing. I pray that you understand what it means to be a blessing. That amen is not born again. Amen. I pray that the glory of God will touch you so hard. Being kingdom minded and kingdom centered is very powerful. While I was talking to Kwame, I said to Kwame, I said to him, I said, my church members are very lovely. Praise God. None of them value or put any man of God above me. They respect me as their bishop and as their shepherd. But there was something we were discussing that brought that. I said to him, I said, there is one member of my church here that anything that consigns this ministry, she post it immediately. She post it immediately. Do you know the Blue Jays? You know why some of them could go get uh, a Blue Jay jersey and it has their favorite player's name on it? It's not their own name. It's their favorite player and they are walking on the street with it, advertising it. How many of us can have Jesus on your shelf, boldly written, I am for Christ. You're walking along the street. No, you will hide. When you see your friends, you just... You just take, you just take one corner. Maybe they have to see you. You start fanning yourself so that they will not be able to read it very well. <laughs> You're not for Christ. Praise God. You have to be bold and believe. And don't get this time. Let me tell you, things are happening. I was talking to somebody a few days ago. I said, Matthew 24 is happening, coming to pass before our eyes. And we think it's a joke. The end time is here. Biblical prophecies are coming to pass every day and people are relaxing. You think, you think, you think the mark of the beast, 666, will be given to you via gun and bomb? They will use gun and bomb? No. You see the way they are stylishly bringing the vaccine in making it mandatory and at the same time telling you that it's not mandatory but giving you very tight astringent rules that you know will not allow you to be free because we love freedom ha ah, this generation love freedom so much that nobody wants to go to jail in the name of the lord that is how it's going to be it is happening For you to survive these days, you have to be kingdom-minded and kingdom-centered. So why is it that many people are not enjoying the covenant of prosperity? Because God entered into covenant with Abraham, told him, he said, I will, I will bless you and you'll be a blessing. From, from that day, Abraham, do you know that Abraham's father was a pagan? Abraham came from not a believing home. Abraham's and Abraham and his father they were idol worshippers when God called him and immediately God called him he saw that the almighty has called him he abandoned that lifestyle and focused on God he never stayed one day God told him move he picked everything picked his family everybody let's go his servants everybody they left So number one thing that has made people not to be able to enjoy prosperity and the covenant of prosperity is, number one is what? Ignorance. 
can i hear you say ignorance ignorance is a is a deadly disease worse than cancer what you don't know is always bigger than you what you don't know is your master the day you defeat your ignorance you become a master of your ignorance are you there I personally define ignorance this way as what you have refused to know. Ignorance is simply defined as what you have refused to know. It's not like you don't know that there is an information about that, but you have refused to know it. It's just like the Bible. Every one of us believers, even in this church and outside this church, all believers everywhere have one Bible or the other in their phone, in their, in their computer, in their iPad, even the hard copy. But they have refused to know the Bible. Not because anything, but because of their personal decision, they have refused to study the Bible. So how would you know? it's a disease is what is killing the church today because i tell you the activities of false prophets and false teachers would reduce if you know the scriptures for yourself the bible is our compacts the bible is what guides you and i the bible is what is is the word of god that keeps you in check is our moral standard hallelujah let's see something in isaiah isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 isaiah 5 verse number 13 thank you holy spirit praise god isaiah 5 verse number 13 are you there Say, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no what? They have no what? And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with what? Test. What caused the famished and the testness is what? Lack of what? Knowledge. What do you know? What information do you have? The difference between the person that is sitting down next to you now and yourself is a level of information either you or the person has that you don't have or she don't have or he doesn't have. What do you know? Some of us are literally living a lifestyle of, you know, you just go to work, come back, sleep, go to work, come back. You don't even know what is happening in Ontario. Let me not say Canada. Canada is too big. You don't even know what is happening in your local government, in your council, in your community. You are not even aware. So if they say, everybody, take off, start running, you may not know because you decided to wake up late at 12 o'clock. By the time you wake up, you come to your balcony. <gasps> you look left, look right. Everybody's gone. You tint out a little bit. You could hear the sound of the next street. Why? Because you don't know anything. Try to know. You may not have all the information, but make attempt to know. If you cannot get it, ask questions. Those that ask questions, they don't get lost. And if you have refused to ask, it's because you have decided that you don't want to know. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Prophet Hosea broke it down very well and made us to see, to see what it means to experience this. This was God speaking. He said, my people are what? Destroyed. For what? 
for lack the same knowledge prophet isaiah spoke the same knowledge prophet Hosea is speaking because of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee when you reject the knowledge of god you cannot be what you have chosen to be It is the knowledge of God inside of you that guarantees you that success with peace of mind. Because there are some successes when you dive into them, your mind will not be at peace. I call those kind of success Babylonian success. And I pray no one here has that kind of, we ever have that kind of success. Amen. That you are blessed, but yet your mind is not at peace. People are looking for you. I don't want that kind of money. I don't want that kind of success. I need a success that when I have it, I know it's genuine. I could go to bed, spread my wings, and sleep, snore my way down and up. And when I come up, I relax. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. For thou hast rejected knowledge, I also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Serve God from the bottom of your heart. You want to be great, seek to know the God you're serving. I tell you, just strive to know God. Some of us were saying, oh, you know, Sister A, see how God is using her. God is making her popular in the church. God's making her popular in the city. But how about me? I am nobody. And you are happy. Please, go to Sister A and ask Sister A, what is it that you're doing I'm not doing? Sister A will tell you something that there is a, some time I spend in the presence of God that you are not spending that time. It's not coming to church, no. Outside church, what do you do? You pack God. You just literally put him inside your suitcase and keep him inside your wardrobe. You only remember that suitcase when you're ready to go to church. You put on God and come to church. Church is not the parameter whereby you'll be weighed or, or no. What you'll be measured at is your activities outside the church. I was discussing with somebody. I said, I said to him, I said, anything that will stop me from doing the work of my God, I'd rather be hungry. I'd rather die. Let it, let it be a testimony for once that somebody refused not to be removed from the things of God and the person died. At least be that person. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Amen. Are you there? If you are in the midst of prosperity and you don't prosper, you will soon become a victim of bitterness. If you are in the midst of prosperity and you are not prospering, very soon you will soon be a victim of bitterness. You know what that means? Everybody is striving hard to prosper. You are not. You are not doing anything to add to yourself and to your life. And suddenly, people around you start prospering. If you refuse or decide that you want to remain where you are, with time, you will start beefing everybody around you that are rich. I have seen people like that. I've even seen pastors like that. You see now, the Dynamics Palace, we are at our stage of walking day and night. Yes, Sometimes some of the members, they say to me, say, don't you rest. I say, now is not time to rest. Now is the time to walk. The time to rest will come. So there are some pastors that they are big boys. Nobody disturbs them. Don't even call their line. 
Don't disturb them. In fact, whoever gives their number to a member in the church is in trouble. And when God starts rewarding people like us for spending extra time, do you know that the only reason why Joshua was chosen by God was because he spends extra time when the church is over? Everybody says, hey, I have to rush to the house. I have to go. I have to go. Joshua stays back with Moses as a little boy. The Bible says he was taken note of. He always stays in the temple, in the sanctuary, when everybody is running to the house. He remains in the tabernacle with Moses. So why do you think that if God is to choose somebody, he will not choose the person closest to the work? Sometimes church is over. Before pastor will say, um, who is there? Like everywhere, like rapture took place. Nobody wants, and you know, you'll be working from Monday to Saturday. You, just three hours to spend in the house of God. That's why I, I thank God for those of our members that sometimes they just feel like sitting around me. And there are certain things I say to them then that I don't say from the pulpit. There are certain things you hear from me when you spend extra time you sit down with me there are certain things that you will hear from me that you will never you may never hear and what does that mean it means that you are having upper hand and upper edge in the realm of the spirit than every other member why you're spending extra time with god extra time you're asking questions You want to run every time. So you have to know why people are succeeding, why they are prospering. Because if you don't bother to know and work on yourself, you will soon start being sister jealousy and brother jealousy. And I turn the name to be jealousy. You know the medication called jealousy. Uh -huh. You start becoming problem in the church, in the community. You are jealous in everybody. Eh, look at her. Because pastor just praised her yesterday. Now she has gone to wear this, this, this high heels. Sis, go to store and buy your own heels. If you can't buy one, tell carpenter to knock one for you. Convert your shoe, your flat shoe to heels. You know it's possible. Why don't you just take your measurement and carpenter will cut the wood like this and it becomes heels. After all, is it not just to elevate you? It's elevation we are looking for. <laughs> it's elevation. Everybody's looking for elevation, right? Spiritual elevation, physical elevation. Every elevation, elevated possible, just be elevated in Jesus' name. So you got to really put that work, that interest. You see certain things, and you go, oh, Pastor, can I help to get this thing done? I'm skilled in this. Your pastor may not want to bother you. Like me, I, I don't like bothering people. If, except those that show interest. I'll say, come. If you are not showing interest, I feel like you are not interested. At this level, this church is now, there is no member, there is no worker. Everybody is a worker. Because I can call on you at any time to get something done. And try to be that person that pastor will have faith on. Because God sent the man of God. And when God sent him, he looks for people he will touch or lay his hands on to assist him get the work done. So if God has sent him, has called him, and he called you, is it not God that is calling you to? It's God. Because the channel, it goes through a channel. So it is also when you disobey your pastor, you have disobeyed God. He's a channel. You bless your pastor, you're blessing God. Because some people say, oh, Bishop Kevin, you talk like you are God. If God created me, gave birth to me, who am I? You're afraid to say it. You are gods. The Bible says, Know ye none that ye are gods and the children of the Most High. 
a dog will never give birth to a snake no matter how they they mix their generic activity it will never come out like that never even though you take some some stuff from snake the snake and you take from dog and you go and mix it it will still come out with something that has ears even though it looks like snake you will still see some little hands and legs somebody say amen are you there number two prosperity is not just about giving prosperity is not just about giving praise God you can you can give money and not prosper <laughs> I know this one looks somehow right you can give money and yet you'll be a beggar pastor what do you mean let's be going because you can be giving money without understanding you will still be where you are nothing is happening what is the basic foundation is knowledge get to know what you're doing I mean we have we have chefs here in this church beautiful wonderful chefs but you see if they are called chefs and they don't know how to cook is a mockery am i complicated that you are a medical doctor you say you went to medical school and you came out they gave you a certificate and the and when you operate on people, you leave instruments inside of them. So both the cover it, tell them God bless you. And after three months, the person will come back to the hospital dying. That's why in this part of the world, before you become a medical doctor, they will scrutinize your soul and your spirit. They will check your ability to, to be very cognitive. They will check you. They will want to understand if indeed you take, give accurate attention to details. Because you cannot take one diagnosis from somebody to go treat another person. So you can give, you can be give money. See, sometimes some people believe that, oh, yes, give. Just be giving. Give to what? You got to have an understanding. Do you know your mind is so powerful? You could focus your mind right now and something will happen. God, see, let me tell you. The mind of a man is so powerful. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man, he didn't say, as the Holy Spirit helps a man to think. Don't bring the Holy Spirit in. Without the Holy Spirit aside, as you think in your heart, so you are. That's why you see unbelievers prospering. Because you know why? I, I will say this, but it, it, it may hit you hard. Get set. You don't need God to prosper. If you need to be a Christian to prosper, then Bill Gates should not be a prosperous man in his business. You need God because you know that he is the internal creator, that after you being prosperous, your soul will prosper. I tell you, prosperity is in three dimensions. Your, your, your spirit prosperity, your, your, your physical prosperity, and your soul, your body, spirit, and soul. Praise God. So, Bill Gates may be prospering bodily, eating his money here on earth, enjoying himself, flight to moon, flight to star, flight to everywhere. But the end, what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world so it's possible for a man to gain the whole world but the basic of it is that he will lose his soul 
now you understand so when you hear me i say you don't need god to prosper it is exactly what it is oh god prosper me get up and ask god to grant you access where your brains will be open the the big time business tycoons you see all around they just decide to open their brains some of us our brain is under lock and keys big bad lock on the brain the brain is not work it's not functioning so if if a human being dies and the brain is still alive and science said they can literally transfer the brain of another person into another person what a powerful move so there is something about the brain the brain and the mind they connect with each other what what do you think what are you thinking about if your mind is filled with dr drake and the rest of them i mean that is what you'll be producing if your mind is filled with jennifer lopez and the rest of them they are making their money but your mind is fixed on their image you will of their image also reap corruption you want to be a prosperous businesswoman your mind is not fixed on what to do to be prosperous i ask us a question anyone that is not a reader will never prosper i've hit a very big one excuse me to take a sip of water this is strong <clears throat> That you are not reading you want to be rich come and get rich let me see it won't work it is based on what you gather that when you come before men and speak they will respect you they say this person got something nobody spends money to go and watch an entity who who are you what do you want you, you, you you think you want to bribe God with your change so you, he will not give you. You want to do exchange rates. You know, that's how people think. If I give God this $2,000, <laughs> he will give me $20,000. For what? Is it a bureau they change? <laughs> In fact, it's an insult that you want to give God $2,000. Let him give you $20,000. Are you trying to tell God that the currency in heaven is very low? That this... <laughs> Some of you don't understand. Like <laughs> you carry your chichiri, you carry your chichiri two thousand US dollars or Canadian dollars, chichiri, and you go and meet God and say, you see, you see this money, God, let me just stone you with this money so that you bless me with twenty thousand. You know, pastors say give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, present together shall men bring unto your bosom, right? Ah. So you are literally insulting God that the currency of Canada is bigger than the currency of God. You know there are some currencies when you bring other currencies they will just they will pull on themselves the people they have on in that currency will be crying why are you embarrassing us if we take a hundred us dollars and get into some third world countries ah, the embarrassment will not be here like if you have so much money you could literally close their central bank buy their central bank and be going put this on your shoulder and go so giving money does not make you prosperous you have to know your god you have to build relationship with god don't live a life of ignorance don't think that you can bribe god no matter who you are he's a respecter of no man are you there number number four number three god is not a god is not prayers god is not prayers 
he answers prayers God is not prayers he answers prayers God is not faith he walk by faith are you there God is not miracle he is a miracle walking God so when you walk in love you walk in God so when you love God you command prosperity are you seeing that <laughs> when you walk in love You command prosperity. The scripture say, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and they that love it, they are born of God and know it God. He say, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8. He that loveth not. No, because for you to know a thing, you first of all have to love that thing. That's why many of us think that we love God, but we don't. Because if you love God, you can't go past each day without Him. How many of us here, our father is still alive? Our dad is still alive? My dad is still alive. Is it possible for you to be in the same house with your father and you don't talk with him? You don't say a word to him. In the morning you see him, you just put your straight face up. You don't talk to your father. Not at all. Because he may watch you the first week, second week. <laughs> I bet you, you won't escape the third week. He'll boot you out. He will tell you, I say, you see this roof? This is my roof. Go and get your own. Now, many of us here I know have some circumstances that surround your, your dad relationship or whatever. I mean, we're all human beings, right? But you see, you can, I dare you to tell me that you will see something happening to your dad along the road something bad you're driving saw your own father ah you will stop at least you will fight that stranger first and still turn around and tap him and say we are still having our beef you remember say yes but let's join now and fight this person you know what that tells you you still love the man but he may be messing up but you still love him that is where you know if you still love him so, I'm saying this to draw our attention to the love of God. That how can you say you love God and you don't communicate with Him every day? You don't communicate with Him every day, every blessed time. You know, the Holy Spirit talks 247. Even as I'm here now, I'm feeling the power of God inside of me. The Holy Spirit is telling me things. That is how you build that relationship with Him. Because He's your Father. Lift up your right hand. Say after me, say, Jesus, take the wheel. Say it one more time. Say, Jesus, take the wheel. Somebody say, Amen. The love of God. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. The love of God. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy what? With what? Did he say some of thy heart? Okay, let me read. 
And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with some of your heart. And with some of thy soul, part of it. Because you've given your boyfriend or your girlfriend all of it, so there's no space. Uh -huh. And with all or some of your strength, because you've been walking from Monday to Saturday. Now you're very tired. So he said, give God some of your strength, right? All? Okay. And with some part of your mind, because your money... Your bank account, your boyfriend's activities and your girlfriend's activities, your spouse's activities, everything is loaded in your mind. So you tell the pastor, you say, Pastor, 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 please. I don't have this time now. I am tired. Anytime you see a man say he loves God, go after his money. Just tell him God needs your money. See his reaction. <laughs> I'm not joking. You see money? Money is powerful. See this prosperity we ask for. How many of us that we are praying now, God bless me in the name of Jesus, I need your blessing. And boom, God hits you with two million today. And as you're catching the two million from the bank, he's telling you for, uh, along the road that take that two million, go and give to Don't take a dime from it. Go and give it to the church. How many of us will do it? It's difficult. But that is where the love is. That was why Jesus, when he died, he saw ah, Peter, went back to fishing. Ah, ah, this man loved fish more than me. And he came back and assembled them. And when he told Peter, he said, Lovest thou me more than this? Today, God is asking every one of us, Do you love me? Or you love your job? You love your activities more than me? You love your comfort more than me? And you know, those kind of questions angers believers. Oh, don't be surprised. After all, when Jesus asked it to Peter, Peter got angry. I mean, Jesus had to stop so it will not turn into fight. <laughs> the, Bible said, the Bible said when Jesus asked him the first time, he couldn't even say yes or no. He answered like a typical Canadian. Thou knowest. You know, when a typical Canadian is giving you an answer, they don't tell you this way. They don't tell you that way. They don't say... I don't know. They just, they, they, they find a middle ground to stand. Because Canadians are middle ground playing people. Peter said, Master, this question you're asking me, you know. And Jesus continued. Peter, <laughs> lovest thou me more than the, Jesus was preparing the fish to give to them. He was, he was holding the fish in his hand. Do you love me more than <laughs> You know, sometimes little children, you have a pack of biscuits and you give them one out of it. You are having the full pack and you tell them, give me some from that. They will hide it. Bam! And open this other hand. Tell you to give more. That's the attitude of many of us. And when Jesus asked him the third time, he got offended. Why are you asking me this whole bunch of questions? But the fact was this. When Jesus died, every one of them returned back to what they were doing before Jesus called them. That tells of vision not being there. When you ask an individual, say, why are you leaving? They say, ah, I'm leaving for my family. But the family one day could go. And you will not have them anymore. So why not take take rat poison and die because the family is gone but they will not die you know why because genuinely they were not living for the family but they tend to replace the original authentic thing why they are living with something else that has the ability to die and fade away so the love of god is not in them that's why they could literally tell God no and go to bed and sleep quietly very well like 
they have the ability to wake up the next day morning. How many of us today can boldly tell yourself that tomorrow morning I beat my chest, I will be up. Nothing will stop me. Have you, have you wondered how you sleep? Can you one day just take a camera and put before your bed and video yourself sleeping? You're like a dead man and a dead woman. Nothing, no light. You, you are not aware of what is happening. You are unconscious. You know, death is like sleep. The person just shut eyes and just like you normally dream, their eyes open also in another world. It's called the, the spirit world. So it is you call dream, dreamland. But the original thing is still a, the spirit world too. Because you could literally inter, inter, interwoven between the, the spirit world and dreamland. They both walked hand in hand. So you could see people in the realm of the spirit. So don't get it twisted like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. And the Bible says, oh, you fool, your soul will be demanded of you tonight. If you understand, God open your eyes a little bit to know how many demons are craving to destroy you at night, even in broad daylight. You will pray like a prayer warrior, not season, day and night. Satan is looking to take us out at every given opportunity. So the strength of most people is in their money. Can I hear you say money? Come on, call it with style. Can I hear you say money? Ha, ah, see how that name that, that the, the name is sounding? Money. money. This same money, who created it? You and I. And how come we give money so much power that even the Bible now recognizes it? God never created money. It is you and I that created it so we could control our dealings with each other. If you, if you study economics, you will know that it's all about with, you know, service. Buying, demand, supply. When somebody supply, you have something you have to give back to that person. So which means I could I could turn tear a paper now and give to you and call it money. If you agree that is what is what, then it becomes a legal document, a legal paper between the both of us, and we start trading with it. That's how money came to be. And how come it became so powerful? that it could ruin our lives how come it became so powerful that it could be the standard for us to serve god how come money became so powerful that because of money some of us may not even come to church they ask you why were you not in church ah, i don't have offering money offering money Be careful what you put in front before God. Because the strength of most people is in their money. That's why some of them, if they don't have money, depression sets in. If you are a believer and because there is no money in your bank account and you are depressed, you need to be born again again. Though that money is your God. See, anything that is taken away from the only thing that will be taken away from me and depression will set inside of me is God. And no man can take God away from my life. So that's why I cannot be depressed. Uh -uh. For what? Depressed over what? That I don't see food to eat? Ah, no problem. I convert it into fasting. Depressed that I don't have clothes to wear. If you are angry that I'm repeating clothes, please help me and visit Versace and Gucci. Go buy clothes and give to me. It won't stop me from coming to church. You're angry that my shoes are not, are, not, are not too good. Hey, go to Mons. 
and buy good shoes and bring the shoes god will bless you and i will bless you too but that will not be the basics for me to serve god lovest thou me more than this is somebody catching something here how did solomon be became the wealthiest man in the bible history first king chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 how did solomon became the wealthiest man in bible history first king chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 are you there everybody read with me first line one to go The, the, go back go back to verse 3 and solomon you see that world lima oscar victor echo delta love and solomon loved the lord that see when a man shows a woman love the woman can give him everything And when a woman shows a man love, the man can literally, you know, some people say, oh, they use the moon to, to, to they could just throw, throw a rope and catch the moon and start bringing the moon. If it was possible, I mean, moon would have been used as souvenir to give to many ladies. Because the man will want to do anything to please that woman. Why? He sensed love coming from her to him. So therefore, anything can be done why she sends love coming from him to her so therefore she could go extra miles you see the power of love this is a love that exists between we humans and but john 3 16 god said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son you see what love can do love can make you give and 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 give away everything and love can replace 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 because as you give in love you replace in love that's why some people say oh i don't have i say no you're not saying the truth you have love and if you have love it could satisfy your hunger i don't know maybe you've not been in love praise god but when you are in love with god it satisfies your hunger you could do anything for god and when you go crazy for god heaven will go crazy for you you become an asset you know an asset in the hands of god you become an asset in the hands of god that nothing can touch you When Abraham took his wife and Abimelech saw Sarah, uh, Lord Sarah, Abraham said, so they don't kill me. He said, tell them that I am your brother. Don't tell them I'm your husband or else they will kill me. Abimelech took Sarah into his house. As he was wanting to touch sister Sarah, God appeared and told Abimelech, if you touch that woman, I, I will kill you. Did Abraham move anything? Did Abraham say anything? What's your relationship between you and God? Is money in between? The reason why, see, let me tell you something. Anything you, anything that God has seen, you may not notice it, but God knows. Anything that God sees that is standing between you and Him, He would demand that you sacrifice that thing. So that's why some of us, money is it. So each time you come to church, the Holy Spirit is always speaking that you give out your money. Give it to him because he is seeing that money is what is standing between you and him. That was why Isaac was what was standing between God and Abraham and Sarah. And God knew it. And God put Abraham to a test. He said, take Isaac, whom thou lovest. He didn't stop there. He said, thy only child. 
whom thou lovest. He said, take him up to the mountain. I will show you where you will offer him up as sacrifice to me. Ah, ah. Just like that. Just like that. God wanted him. Wanted Isaac out of the way. And Abraham never thought it twice. See, I am believing God for believers that will not think twice or go to reconsult. Some of you, when God asks you to do something, you go to your, to your, to your colleague in the office. Uh, 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 my colleague, please sit down. Let's have lunch together. Uh, there is something my pastor said. I'm just wondering if this is God. Hey, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And who are you asking? Somebody that has never been to church before. That doesn't even know God. You, you've been to church for four years, five years, six years. And you're calling an unbeliever. So what do you think the unbeliever will tell you? Of course, he will tell you it's a scam. It's like you already know the judgment, what the person will give. You're taking the case to the person because you want somebody to support you to do evil. Because that's how some people will be. They want to do it, but they don't want to do it alone. They need somebody to be by them to commit the evil. You know, you know, this Sunday service was nice, but I left the service so pained in my heart. How could pastor say that? And your colleague will say, oh, pastors? <laughs> hmm. I've heard so much about them. I have heard, but they have never experienced anyone. And you are not taking note of what they are saying to you. I've heard so much about them. I heard so much stories. I watched so much videos, fictions. And you will not carry your destiny of tomorrow to put in the hand of an unbeliever. Ah. In fact, angels should literally come down physically, hold your butts, and flog you very well for it. And that unbeliever. Some of them stopped going to church 15 years ago because they saw something that they say they believe is not right. They got offended and quarreled with God. They got so mad, stopped going to church. And you went to such person, the person should advise you. And when they finish advising you, you will move and go and confront your pastor. Hey. If only people understand the spiritual implication of certain things they do. How did Solomon acquire or came to the place of his wealth? And Abraham took Isaac, never even told Sarah. Because if he had told Sarah that God said, maybe Sarah would have given him poison in that night meal he's taking. In the night i tell you a woman that has waited all these years and finally she just like you 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 you're a man and you have a wife and the both of you have been struggling begging god to bless you and finally god now bless both of you you had a breakthrough of one million dollars and your wife has run to the church to go and testify before the brethren hey I am a Milonia, Milonia. Hey. Yeah, she's dancing. And by the time she's coming back home, <laughs> you're telling her, Sissy, <laughs> you have to, I don't know. She said, What is it, sweetheart? You know, we're going to go to Jamaica. We're going to go flex the place. We're going to go to here. We're going to flex the place. We'll buy a house. We'll buy this. Like, you know, women, they could use their eyes, see building here. And the man say, uh, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, you know, that money, I actually got the check. But on my way coming back to the house here, I, I, I heard the Holy Spirit say, 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 say that I, uh, I should give it out. You know, if the, if the lady was putting on Brazilian hair or human hair. Yeah. She would just you say what is it? Johnny. 
that night that man will eat rat poison because the woman will say to the man you are of no use so that was the position where Abraham found himself. And I believe that Abraham saw and he knew the temperament of Sarah. Sarah is not an easy woman. When Hagar decided that she wants to misbehave, Sarah, Sarah put Hagar where Hagar belonged. And God stood by Sarah for that one and said, yes, I'm standing by her. So Sarah is not a, she, she's a no-nonsense woman in the Bible. And Abraham knew that my wife, She's an explosive dynamite. So he never wanted, he wanted, let it be that he went and obeyed God, sacrificed Isaac and come back and explain to Sarah. He said that would be better for him. But never knew that God was setting him up for the everlasting covenant of greatness. Don't, if you're not ready to serve God, sit down. If you say you want to serve God, there are, you have to serve Him with the whole of your heart. No time to play church. Church is not a dull place. Hello? It's not a dull place. It is people that are dull, not the house of God, not the church. You could literally create activities in your church. Put God first. Put everything you're doing after. And you see, God becomes the water that waters your crops when you plant them. Because you've put him first. Everything you do will prosper. Why? God is in front of you. But if you carry your activity and put in front of God, when the wind will blow, it will hit that activity and destroy it. And then you will now turn to God and say, God, why? God will say, but you kept me behind. I am where you kept me. So some of us need to bring out God from our little purse. Go to your closet, where you kept God all these years. Just open the closet. Tell him from today, Lord, I need you to be my final say. I need you to be in front of me. I need you to lead the way. I need you to be my pathfinder. I need you to be that, that person that I will listen to. The only voice I will hear is you. Not my mind. And when you do that, you genuinely leave the wheels. Because some of us will say, I give you the wheel. But by the time the wheel is moving one corner, you want to help God to straighten the wheel. Say, God, ah, are you sleeping? Put the wheel straight. God is not sleeping. Things may not look like it's going well. Because sometimes when you are moving, the vehicle tends to be moving one corner. God knows what he's doing. And if you say you want to help him, you may turn the stereo back again and put it on the way. And here it comes. It's a truck in front of you. Allow God to lead you. We all know how we came in here. It wasn't visible at all. Even me as a human, at some point, I cautioned myself. I said, hey, 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 guy, what's happening? I was, talking, I, was talking to, I was talking to one of us here today. That at a point, God was passing through that individual to speak to me. It's not easy. I tell you, I, I give it. It's not easy to, to listen. And you see the dangers everywhere. God is still telling you. It's not easy. That tells of how you can depend on him. Some professionals that are professionals in the accounting field, they looked at our church income. They said, no, 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 you can't carry it. We are not based our vision on the income of the church. We are based it based on the income of heaven. Heaven can't go bankruptcy. God cannot be broke. So his work will not stop. Amen. And this is how many months now? From February. How many months? Seven months to eight months. We are still standing. We are not owing any, anybody. Who could it be? 
Some of you don't even know what God is doing for this ministry. The informations I get from people out there, they are like mind-blowing. Sometimes God is blessing you, you may not even notice it. It's people around you that are seeing it, they will call your attention to it and say, can't you see how your life is just moving? Some of us could literally tell that from the moment we stepped our foot into the water to be baptized, gave our life to Christ and we are baptized, we could literally tell that life has shifted for us. There was a major shift in the realm of the spirit. You may not be where you want to be right now, I get it, but... You, you are not where you used to be. You've, you've, you've moved. And if you can literally, genuinely from your spirit, look into your life, you will know that God has been good. God has been good. God is not a magician that literally just moves things immediately. No, 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 no. He's a God of process. You know that the journey from, 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 from Egypt to the promised land should have taken the children of Israel three days. I'm not three good days. But God said, if I take them through the easy way, at least they see battle tomorrow and they run away. So God took them through the wilderness of Goshen. Through dry places. They saw battles. They fought. Because they know that they don't have anywhere to fall back to. They have to go forward. That mindset is the mindset you need to make it and to be prosperous. Because you don't have any back, back end to fall to. Some of us, we have the, the mindset that, oh, anything that happens, I will fall back to my uncle. I will fall back to my dad. I will fall back to my brother. I will fall back to my sister. That's why you are not moving. Because you still have option B. I don't have option B. Is either I make it here or I die. That's my decision. Because God will not let me to die. He will open the door for me to go through. You have to make that decision boldly. Don't be afraid. And God knows that his name and his word is at stake. And he said he watches over his word to bring them to pass. It is not your responsibility to bring God's word to pass in your life. It's his responsibility, not yours. Stop making it look like you have to make it happen. No, you don't. God will make it happen for you. All he wants you to do is to stand your ground. Stand your ground. Don't give up. If you started that business and it didn't do well, reshuffle it and start again. For the fact that you tried it, it never worked the first time. Doesn't mean you should go, go back and give up. Try it one more time. If you fail, try it again. If you fail, keep trying until you get it. The man, the man, that, the man, that, the man that introduced the light that we are using today, forgotten his name. Forgot his name. Either Michael Faraday or so. You know how many times he tried and failed? so much that is enough for you to call him a stupid fool but one day he woke up got negative and got positive connect them to an electrolyte and power flow and the light pop up till today this is what we are using to survive men that made impact that the world will never forget I'm not talking about noise makers. I'm talking about impact makers. Let me tell you something before I close. Don't plan to leave this earth without making a mark. Or else you will regret it. When others will be counting how much they have impacted this earth with, what would you be saying? 
and don't be in a haste to go to heaven <laughs> because what you do here is what they will use to reward you in heaven so where are you running to a young man died and I just wonder I said ah just like that where are you going so young sometimes what kills people is because they don't have any passion they don't have passion for anything they're not burning for anything a man wanted to die he was shot in the battlefield he wanted to die and at that point he was saying oh pass my love to my wife and suddenly his friend checked in his pocket and saw the wife picture and said you mean this beautiful woman the man said I'm not dying anymore <laughs> you see his confession at first was leading him out of this life but when he saw reason to leave he said I am not dying anymore the book wrote that strength came on him and he stood up with that bullet and made it true it's a matter of where you're viewing yours from me from the angle we am viewing is an angle of I will make it what are you seeing what do, what kind of future do you see for yourself do you see darkness do you see do you see do you see failures do you see disappointments here and there what are you seeing what are you seeing now i understand so much the reason why i pass through many hurdles in life now i know because they are not making sense to me now after 15 years after 17 years after 20 years they are now making much much sense now to me i say oh so these are the exams and finally the retest will come because you've already seen it before you know how to navigate life and go your way some people say oh you are not looking you're not looking like you're passing through something i say yes the world I'm passing through does not mean that I am in it. I'm only walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And I will fear no evil. For the Bible says, For thou art with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. He says, Surely. I love that word, surely. Surely simply means that don't bother about what you're seeing surely surely simply means that even if they have declared you a failure surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen rise to your feet thank you holy spirit Ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding. In the name of Jesus. Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Open the eyes of my understanding, O Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I give you praise. I give you all honor. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands together to the Lord.